This video will be about uh, getting started in programming these STC microcontrollers. I'll be using the STC 15F104W. I think some of them are called 104Es. Uh, they're commonly found in kits, the Chinese kits you buy for soldering, like this windmill kit. I've got one of these. I'll be showing how to uh, compile a small program for the ST SDCC compiler and then programming it onto the chip with the STC ISP software. First of all, we'll need to get the ST SDCC compiler. If you search for Google, you'll come up with this link. It'll point you here. And then down here is the download link. It takes you to SourceForge, which I'm not wild about, but okay. This is the latest version. It's 4.0 for a 64-bit Windows. We'll download it. It's got a little counter up here. Save it. We'll open it up. I've already downloaded it before just for trying this out. To uh, run it, just uh, run as administrator is what I do. Yes. Next. Agree. Next. Uh, I'm not sure how many of these we need, so I'm just going to install them all. I'm going to install it to uh, straight off the C drive. That way it'll be easier to find it. You can install it in the program files or wherever you want to. It's important that you leave uh, this checked so that it will add it to your C or your environment uh, path. That way uh, when you execute it from a command line, Windows will be able to find it. We're done. Okay, we can get out of this. Uh, now we need to get our STC ISP software. If you Google that, you'll come up with this link, which points you to here. These top two links don't work for downloading the software. 6.86 is a uh, what I've been using so you can download it I've already done this before open that up it'll it comes down in an RAR file uh, which I have 7 zip to unzip it it was a free program I got from somewhere and you'll just extract it I've already done it and that put it right here it's just a single file this is a standalone file it doesn't have to be installed so what I do is I just copy it or cut it and paste it into wherever it's going to finally live in my case it's a uh, folder called utilities now we have both the pieces of software that we need if you want to check out if the STCC actually installed type command in your search window to bring and get a command prompt and then just type SDCC and it'll bring up a little help screen that tells you that Windows was able to find it the executable file so that works next I'll show how to actually compile a uh, program with the compiler and then burn it on the chip with the STC ISP software now we'll compile a program with the SDCC compiler. I have my uh, programs in a folder, in the documents folder, in a subfolder called SDCC. Each program is in its own folder. Uh, the one we'll be compiling is this one, hello. There are three files in here. The main C file. It uh, includes this header file, which has the address definitions for the microcontroller in it. The Windows batch, batch file is what invokes the SDCC compiler and produces the hex output. 
Let's see what's in Hello C. This program will toggle an LED on port 3.3 .3 once a second. It will also send out the text HI to a terminal. The terminal we will, we will be using is actually in the SDC ISP software. We'll see that when we compile it. It does this every second. It, it uses 2400 baud. It's a uh, bit bang software serial port. This is just the uh, lines in the batch file. Some definitions for the port lines. This port set port mode function. We won't be using it at first in this program. Uh, the STC chips have four four modes for each I/O pin. We'll be using the default zero, zero mode, which can uh, sync much more current than it can source. Otherwise, it can provide ground uh, and get much more current out to it out of it than if you use the output high. You'll see that on the LED in a minute. The delay 2400 is a, uh, a inline assembly language routine that delays one bit time, 416 microseconds. If you divide, divide one second by 2400 baud, you get 416 microseconds. 12 megahertz is how we want to set the clock on the chip when we program it. This function just sends a character out, an 8 bit character. Uh, this sends a carriage return and a line feed so we can tidy up the display. Here's the main uh, part of the program. These lines here are commented out so the port modes won't be changed. They'll just start up in their default zero mode. And here we're setting the LED line to low, printing out the text high and sending a line feed. Then we'll go into our forever loop that uh, toggles the LED and sends out high every second. So let's compile this first. Let's just uh, close this out. We'll open up the batch file and see what kind of output we got. Uh, if you see these lines generating code, calling assembler, all of this, this is where it was actually working. If you don't see these and you see error messages, it'll usually tell you what line the Met the uh, error is on in the file. Uh, it could be better on the error handling, but uh, it is what it is. And it produced uh, this hello hex file from this IHX file. And here's all the files we got out of it. Most this is the one we're after. This is the one we will uh, program into our chip. You can see what it contained. It's just an Intel hex file. These other uh, files are intermediate files that it used to to compile the program. Uh, this one is interesting. It will show you how much memory you used. 354 bytes. That will be approximately 4K. So now let's so now let's see how to uh, program this end of a chip with the STC.ISP software. Now I'll show how to use the STC ISP program to burn the code into the chip. First we'll look at the hardware. We have a USB to serial converter. The VCC coming out of it 5 volts goes to the VCC on the chip. The TX line of the converter goes to a 220 ohm resistor to port 3.0. The RX line of the converter goes to P31 on the chip, no resistor. The ground line from the converter goes through a normally closed switch to the ground line on the chip. When we open up the switch, that will cycle power on the chip and start the download process. There's also a 0.1 microfarad capacitor just for decoupling. We have a switch up here, although this program will not use it. The first program I show you. Port 3.3 .3 is where our LED is connected through a 1K resistor. The cathode of the LED is, goes to ground. 
so we have to put 5 volts on this side to illuminate the LED. This will show uh, the different driving, current driving capabilities of the different modes of the pin. So let's open up the software and uh, program a chip. I have it stored in uh, the ut a utilities directory. Just double click on it to run it. It throws out some crazy message. I'm not sure you can see that because of OBS. Here we are. We have our the chip we're going to use selected. There's a whole list of them down here. But this is the one we want. STC15F104W. We have the COM port that our USB to serial converter is on selected. <coughs> down here is a very important. We need to select 12 megahertz because that's what the program was written for. So the software serial port will work. To download the program, we're just going to press download. Oh, we forgot to open the code file. Open the code file. Hello Hex. That's the one we created with a batch file. And here's our all the hex numbers for our code. We go down now to download program. Now we have to cycle power by pressing a slick switch. And we had success. The LED is blinking. Although because of all the light I have you can't see it. I will uh, fix that in just a second. First I want to show you this COM helper. This is a little terminal that's built right into the software so we don't have to load up a terminal program or anything to or to uh, see our uh, HI letters output. We go into text mode. We could clear the screen right here if we had something. We got 2400 baud selected which is what we wrote the program for. Open com and there we go every second we get a high. Now the LED is blinking. I'll turn off these lights so you can see it. Hopefully that's showing up, but it's still very dim. Uh, we can make it brighter by going into the, by changing the uh, mode that the pin is on. First of all, let's shut this down. Let's go into Notepad where our source code is. This line was commented out, so let's uncomment it. So we will set a mode of uh, port three, bit three to one, which is a push-pull output. We'll save that. Now we have to recompile it. Down here. Where I compile hello bat. Open it up. Seem to work. Now we go back into our ISP software. Now another neat thing about this program. It's kind of a, it has a lot of nice features. Auto reload the target file. So when we press this download button, if our hex file is changed, it'll go out and uh, reload it. So download program, cycle power. After it loads, the LED should be blinking brighter, and it seems to be. I, I have to have a lot of light because I'm just using a webcam to do this. It's not a very good setup to say the least. And we can uh, open up our COM port and see that we're still getting the HI out of it. Uh, this, uh, this has a lot of other nice tools. The delay tool is what I use to generate the 2400 baud delay time. You open it up. We have to set the chip for a proper one. I believe this is right. It's, we can go down here to assembly code. If you generate C code, it will not work with the STCC compiler. Uh, it will work with the KEIL K -E -I -L compiler. I've tried it and it generates the proper timing, but it does it with the STCC. Then we tell it we want it 416 microseconds. And there's, we tell it assembly code, and there's the code that I used. 
for generating a delay so that's very handy it also has a for timer and all kinds of things uh, this is handy too you can pick your show your pin out right there it is I'll turn the lights back on and you can see that it's still not blinking too brightly but uh, a lot of that's just the amount of light I have to use to uh, make the video I think I'll just go ahead and show the other program I've written that uh, it's more or less like the first one but it prints out some numbers so it's got some utility functions to it it's just hello numc we'll open it up in uh, notepad take a look at it most of it is the same as the other down here we have a send byte as hex so we can send out a byte and as two hex digits send the integer as decimal so this actually I think I got this from a Ben Heck video on programming the A-Tiny and most of the code is the same uh, but it prints out an integer as a decimal number so uh, It'll print out like a 65535. This is the carriage return line feed. This will print out an integer as a hex number, but it'll be four hex digits. Down here's the main part of a program where it prints high. Uh, Should have used the carriage return line feed there. Uh, prints out some numbers. Just These are routines just to test those functions when it boots up or when it resets it'll go through these uh, these are just test to test for functions down here in the forever while loop we do this one second delay toggle the LED send out the high uh, message and then we send a, a byte as binary port 3 so this will read in the whole port 3 and then print it out as binary so let's uh let's compile that seem to work okay we see all the files we created let's open up the mem and see what we got 948 bytes so it took considerably more memory than the, the other one now let's uh, burn it into our chip. Here we are with the ISP. Uh, we have the same chip and COM port selected. Same 12 megahertz clock. We have to open the code file since it's changed. Uh, let's go up and find it. Hello num hex. Okay. Uh, I believe we're ready to download. With the download button, cycle power. This is really a pretty simple process we had success let's open up our com port and see what we're getting this is where i was testing it a minute ago uh, and we get high and the, the pattern of a port uh, if i press this button we can see that uh, uh c8 7 bit 5 is changing to a zero when i press it the other bit that constantly toggles is the port pin is driving the LED when when the processor resets of this program let's clear the buffer and re reset it power to reset and it prints out a bunch of binary numbers these are the testing of uh, functions that I put at the start of a program just to make sure they worked these are good utility functions in case you need to get numbers out of a chip. The reason I, one of the reasons I did all this was uh, to just to get some utilities so when you're programming it, uh, you can get some information out of a chip. That's why I used a uh, simple delay routine instead of the timers and interrupts to generate the serial port because if you're writing some real code, you might want to use those features in your code and not have to worry about interfering interfering with them in your uh, serial routine. I believe that's about all I wanted to show. Uh, 
so I'll close this out. Oh, the last thing I did want to point out was the I have re I've redone the LED so that when you provide ground to it, it lights up now. Instead of before where you had to provide 5 volts. And this will show the different driving capabilities of a mode 0 uh, port pin. It can sink much more current than it can source. Uh, this LED is much brighter than it was when I just drove it in mode 0 by providing a high on the pin. I believe you can even see it now blinking with the lights on. Faintly. Well, that's all I wanted to say.